Yo, what it is everybody, thanks for tuning back into another episode here on the Speed Bug channel. All right, I'm gonna talk to you about a question about this car I get often asked a lot. And I'm not tired of asking or being asked it, I'm just gonna answer it for you all in a video. So let me, first and foremost, uncover it. We're talking about Snow White. Now, this is my race car Corvette, not Pikachu, the yellow one. And I often get asked about specifically this car and my ZR1 front end conversion. And was it worth it? What does it entail? Stuff like that. Would I do it again? Uh, do I recommend it? How's the fitment? And stuff like that. So the answer to all of that is, well, first and foremost, would I recommend it? If you drive your car on the street, the answer is hell no. I would not recommend this conversion one bit whatsoever. Even if you have the stock lowering bolts and your car is lowered, you have to raise it up 100%. doesn't matter if you have a Z51, a non-Z51, or Z06. If you lower your car even on stock bolts, not buying lowering bolts, there's no way your car is going to clear the ground. Now, I could show you mine right here, and my car actually has lowering bolts. And I raised my car two and a half inches from when I got it. From when I put the, when, meaning when I put the bumper uh, cover on. So just by sitting here and just showing you how low it actually is, it's a real pain in the ass. So I'm filming on a GoPro and it is hitting the top of the GoPro right in the corner. So how much is a GoPro? Two, two and a half inches? You have to take that into accountability when you're driving your car on the street. Now, I'm not talking about that bumper fitment or anything like that and tell you guys how that fits and stuff like that. I'll get into all of that because you guys want to know. This car is already raised two and a half inches. When I had my car lowered, I didn't have any wheel gap or anything in here. And you take your finger and you could see I have about an inch and a half of wheel gap from the top of my tire. On my stock 20s and stuff like that. My car, when I put this originally on, that bumper cover was like pretty much right here at the bottom. It was, it looked freaking badass, but you couldn't do anything. I couldn't even get it in my garage over the little lip to get it into the garage without it hitting. There it up went. Now, people that have a ZR1, have they lowered theirs and stuff like that? Yes, they have, but they don't drive it on the street. You have to also remember the ZR1 is a track car it is designed to also only and pretty much go around the racetrack and if you look at even stock photos of the zr1 and you could see how low the front valance is with the huge wheel gap and let's say you take away half of that wheel gap well you're also going to take away half of the gap between the front lip whether or not the dive planes are actually here on the side or not to do any of that in a factory zr1 you could pull 1.3 G's easily diving into a corner plus, and the front will scrape. Hell, I've pulled 1.2 in my car with the way my car is set up, not on this bumper, but on my last one, and have scratched my last one with my Z06 front end. This car, I've only pulled about a G with this front end on, and it has scratched the side underneath here already. Not that it's a big deal or anything because it's underneath, but you have to pay attention. And that, remember, this is already raised two and a half inches from where the car used to be. So going over railroad tracks, going over speed bumps, going over speed humps and stuff like that, you have to pretty much examine everywhere that you go, no matter what, where you're pretty much going with this front end to have it drive comfortably on the street now there comes a real pain in the ass now everyone knows that the corvette has a very long nose and a very low front end it already is a pain in the ass in some places to go especially if you lower your car with the stock front end on stock bolts and if you have aftermarket front end it's gonna be an aftermarket bolts to lower it even more it's even worse so now let's talk about the fitment 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 is good. You have two options. You can get a GM bumper, 
or you can go to another site that has a reproduction bumper. It doesn't really matter. The both of them are pretty much awesome. If you use the GM bumper, you do have to get the fenders. If you don't, if you use the reproduction bumper, you don't have to get the fenders, but there's a lot of other things that you do have to get. It doesn't really matter which one's cheaper or anything like that. Um, neither one of them are a direct bolt-in. Will they clip in to, to most of the places? The answer is yes. Is it going to fit 100% perfect on either one? The answer is no. Uh, I've taken this front bumper cover off or many Corvettes, I don't know. You know, I couldn't tell you how many times in, <clears throat> in my life and knowing where every single nut and bolt is by removing them and stuff like that, it still took me probably a good three hours to probably fit and put the bumper cover on and make it right. So it's a lot of fit, a lot of finishing and stuff like that, and especially assembling the bumper with all of the little pieces. With the canards, every screw, you know, the 30 screws that hold the front lip on. Then you have, of course, all of your valances and your vents and stuff like that, and all of your clips on the inside. And then you have your brake ducts, and then you have all of your other stuff that's inside of there that you have to pay attention to. And then my car, because it has a bunch of aftermarket stuff inside, so I have my aftermarket trans coolers, I have my intercooler because my car is supercharged, and all kinds of other things and stuff like that. It's just a lot of extra fit and finish that you have to make sure that you get want to get right around the headlights and stuff like that does the you know and this is after i've reworked mine don't mind the gap or anything like this is here because my hood is open and i was doing some other stuff but when it's all closed and when i'm not working on the car the fit and finish and stuff like that after you take the time with the body shop and stuff like that it really depends on when it comes up to you um again as far as the paint and stuff like that that really depends on how good of a paint that you're going to use, how hard of a clear you want to use. Are you going to use, you know, cheaper nascent? Are you going to use good PPG? Whatever it is, that's all going to come down to it also in the, the body shop. Remember, the paint is 5% of the finish. The prep and everything of the bumper is about 95%. As far as the fit and finish after sanding it down and stuff like that, I got it to fit exactly just like a factory and OEM bumper did. And my, You know, it's not perfect. It's not a Porsche. But that's also what you pay for so much in Corvette. So as far as the fit and finish was with the aftermarket bumper, I've used the aftermarket one and the OEM. They're pretty much exactly the same. Where it all adds up is that you have to change your fender liners, your wheel wells, where the stuff is going to bolt to. How are you going to get your horn hooked up? How are you going to get your, uh, your brake ducts inside of there? If you have any other modifications underneath, what do you have to make for that? You have to get new under valance trays. None of this is a direct bolt-in. And if you think that it is going to be a direct bolt-in, do not get it because you're going to be really frustrated and it is not going to line up all said and all and everything front bumper cover and stuff like that just north of five thousand dollars um five thousand dollars us not remember you're just not buying the bumper cover you have to buy all the other shit that goes along with the bumper cover the only thing that i was able to reuse from my z06 bumper to this bumper cover was my side marker lights and my front cameras that I actually didn't even put in because after taking this thing off, it's such a pain in the ass to put back together. Um, you also have to get all different types of screws because the screws from the factory bumpers and stuff like that are too tall and too long. So you either have to cut them or modify them so that they don't poke through the lower valances to keep everything secure. And you have to secure them, whether you put intercoolers or anything or not inside of... Uh, your big open ducts. If you have one thing that is not secure, one thing that is not coming up, the second you go out and like 50, 60 miles an hour with the amount of air that the front end of this thing grabs, it's going to rip off the rest of the stuff, your fender liners, your brake ducts and all that other stuff. So if your shit is not tip top, you know, shape underneath, don't even plan on doing it. Um, with my other car, my yellow Corvette, now, do I like this? Do I think it's cool? Do I love the look of it? Absolutely. Uh, do I want to do it to my other car? Yes, this is my race car. It primarily only lives on the racetrack. Since I've had this front bumper cover on, I've only driven it on the street once or twice. Uh, I drive my yellow car a lot more on the street and I have the Z06 front end on that car and it is good enough. It's pain in the ass enough. Not that I have a lot of steep places that I go, but you have to be careful of that. This car with that front end, it, it's, it's just not going to happen. 
uh, or you're gonna you're gonna take off your lip. And whether you buy a new lip from GM or you buy a reproduction lip, no, well, let's just say they're not a hundred bucks. So. Uh, and then if you have yours carbon or you have yours painted, then you got to go have them paint matched and stuff like that. And then you got to put them on. And let me tell you, putting that front lip on, it's not hard. It's just tedious. So be prepared for it if you want to do it. So overall, the question is, would I recommend it? And am I going to do it to my other car? And the answer is hell no. There's not a chance that I'm going to do it to my car. Even if it was half the amount of money, I still wouldn't do it because the pain in the ass and the way that it makes you drive because you have that on there, it's really that it almost takes the fun out of enjoying with the car. Yeah, it's cool. You get the looks, people get the flam or gam and stuff like that, but it's, it, it, it's not cool. And it's just, it, it takes a lot of the fun out of the, uh, out of the vehicle. So, my overall recommendation if your car sits and you only sometimes drive it on the weekends but you do like to enjoy it maybe you like to go through a drive through you know get some mcdonald's or some starbucks or whatever it is that you like to do and stuff like that you can kiss all that shit goodbye with this front end because if you scratch it or do something like that you are going to be pissed and it's not going to be a 250 or 300 dollar fix like a new lip is for a z06 and stuff like that you scratch and take off a corner of the front of this lip it's not just taking off the lip it's taking off all of the supports underneath and stuff like that you could take off your dive planes and then you could crack the bumper and then you could also pull off all of the other stuff where it's bolted to here on the inside so just think about that um some people it may come out a little bit cheaper again depending on the paint and stuff that you want to use i used a good product um i can just tell you this if you want it done right and anything like that if you probably use the shittiest paint out there uh, i didn't use the craziest paint but i used you know pretty good stuff and uh, there's no way all said and done no way that it's going to be under four thousand dollars to have it done right. I'm not saying that you can't get the bumper cover on your car for less, but to have it done right with all of the bracketry and everything like that, it's over five grand to do it and I just wouldn't do it again. Um, so, uh, or you just buy a, a, a ZR1. But uh, the big benefit that I have with my car having a huge blower and uh, needing all of the air you know for, for for the blower and how i've rerouted my duct work and stuff like that it helps me a lot at the track but my car pretty much only stays on the racetrack so i don't have to worry about dips it goes in the trailer out of the trailer onto the racetrack or in my garage and that's pretty much about it so if you're going to do it on the street do not do it it's not worth it hell there's a reason why you probably don't see a bunch of zr1s on the street i just wouldn't recommend it but to each his own, and uh, that's my synopsis on having the ZR1 front end conversion. I just wouldn't recommend it. I wouldn't do it if your car stays on the street. Even if you only drive your car 3,000 miles a year, and it's all in those 3,000 miles on the street, I wouldn't do it. My car is lucky, lucky, lucky if it sees 300 miles a year. Lucky. And if it sees 250 of it, that means. 250 of them or 280 of them are all on the racetrack and the other 20 are probably cruising around the neighborhood to make for test rides and stuff like that i just wouldn't recommend it it's a pain in the ass so hope that helps you guys thanks for tuning in to another episode here on the speed bug channel we'll see you for another one and uh y'all make the choice hopefully y'all make the right one peace out